Dear learners, Namaskar. Welcome back to the course on Organizational Behavior, Individual Dynamics in Organization. Today we start with the new module, Affect and Emotions. This is one of the most important module across the, uh, the course where we look into the effect and specifically the emotions in detail. I'm Dr. Abraham Sirlaisak. I am an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So we move right away into the theme. Sometimes an air hostess smiles at passengers even when she doesn't feel like it. Now this is not pertained to one job. This is there in every single job. This is there with every single aspect of your job. You just introspect that there are situations where we are, we have to behave in a way that is desired by the organization, but sometimes it, it leads to a lot of emotional dissonance. So this is what we start with today as, as the theme of uh, today's lecture. Let's look into affect emotions and moods. So many a time there, there are discussions that, that pertain to whether these are similar, what is the subtle difference between affect emotions and moods. So we, we tend to address that in, in the first slide itself. Affect is specifically a generic term that covers a broad range of feelings that people experience, including both emotions and moods. So affect is a larger umbrella which has emotions as well as moods. So I'm going a bit slow here so that you tend to have a detailed and clear understanding about the different concepts related to emotions and moods. So affect is a larger umbrella which embodies or which covers both emotions as well as moods. When you look into intense feelings directed at someone or something, that is emotion. So let's look uh, at an example. Let's say there, there is a, a person who is um, crossing across suddenly when you are driving. So there is a sudden anger. There is a sudden uh, frustration. Sometimes you feel that, uh, you know, you tend to see that a behavior which is not desired or which is not expected. There is a disgust, right? So all these aspects emerge as emotions which are intense feeling, which could be directed at someone or even something. So there could be the emotion that is happening towards a particular object also. Sometimes you, you have uh, anger towards, let's say, some, some particular object. There are situations like this. Day on a day-to-day -day basis, you would actually see this. So it's, it's just uh, customary. If you look into your life in this day, you must have at least been happy at some times, at times you were uh, frustrated, you were angry, you were sometimes very passive towards things coming your way. So all these emotions, range of emotions you have displayed, let's say, I'm assuming that you are hearing or going through this lecture at the beginning of the day. Let's, let's take a time frame. You are looking at or hearing or going through this lecture at uh, let's say 11.30 in the morning. If that's the case, by 11.30, you would have seen even, even within the short span of you know, starting the whole day, you would have seen a lot of emotions passing through your mind or through you in this short span of time. So the range of emotions is that what I wanted to underscore within a human being within a short span of time. So that makes the module itself uh, the, the, the take on emotions itself very critical, very important, very, very vital. When you are looking into less intense feelings and emotions specifically and often though not always arise without a specific, specific event acting as a stimulus, then it pertains to moods. So you don't need a particular stimulus to arouse you and have an emotion. That is mood. Mood is more generic in nature. More, mood is less intense feeling, but it is more generic in nature. So that is the clear understanding of effect, emotions and moods. We move ahead with a, a certain level of example based understanding of what moods can actually mean. When you look into moods, moods can intensify emotions. For example, you are feeling angry. 
towards a colleague because they are rude to you? This might be just one case. If you look into your organization or your day-to-day -day activity within the organization, you might feel angry towards a colleague for many reasons. So one reason could be that he or she is rude to you. So this intense feeling probably comes and goes very quickly. Maybe even, even in a matter of a few seconds, this can happen. So this is what makes emotion a very critical element because the, the time span is also very less. So, but when you are in a bad mood though, you can feel bad for several hours. So, that emotion might be happening in let's say a fraction of seconds or in, in couple of seconds, that's it, done. But the repercussions, the consequences of that particular moment would stay with you maybe for minutes, maybe for hours, or maybe even for days, which is slightly difficult. But the fact is that there could be a long persistence of the factor or that moment that, that will be reflected again and again within your life for some time. So this is what that moods can intensify emotions or this uh, I hope will underscore how moods can intensify emotions. When you are looking into emotions particularly, emotions are reactions to a person or an event. As I've already mentioned, there should be a particular stimulus that's associated with your the aspect of eliciting the particular emotion and that stimulus reaction is what is known as emotion. So emotions can turn into moods when you lose focus on the event or object that started the feeling, right? That is where what distinguishes, again, uh, emotions from the moods. When you are actually, uh, you know, uh, not thinking of or you have started uh, losing the feeling of that particular uh, event or object, it can turn into moods. So, moods, again, please try to recollect the previous slide, which is less intense feeling when compared to emotions. So, when you are similarly good or bad in mood, good or bad mood can make you feel more emotional in response to an event. So, this is more critical. So, what or how you reciprocate or behave in a particular event could be judged by or could be triggered by your mood. So let's take an example. When a colleague criticizes you, how you spoke to a client, you might show an emotion. Now this is very tricky. There might be situations in your organization, you tend to regard yourself as a very good person with a very good interpersonal skills, you know how to communicate both the verbal as well as the non-verbal communication. You are the go-to person for many of your superiors when it comes to your communication. Sometimes your written skills are adored, sometimes your uh, verbal skills are or you are, you are very articulate or you know that you have great skills in terms of communication. But there is some colleague that he, uh, is coming to you and telling that, okay, I understand that you know how to talk, but the way you dealt with the particular client or the, the particular customer was not proper. So sometimes when you, when you get to hear such a comment, it can put you off. And this is particularly that emotion that is being triggered. And now, you tend to react to that particular individual in different ways in different times. So, every single situation uh, where you are behaving in a irrational way, let's, let's, for the moment, let's take it irrational because you are not putting your mind, the information is not being processed. You are behaving with that person in a way that is being triggered or dominated by your previous experience with that individual. So there is a certain level of reciprocity that's happening because he or she behaved in such a way. So tomorrow, let's take an example. Tomorrow you get an opportunity to belittle him or her, ridicule him or her. You may be using it. It depends on again your personality and your predisposition in the organization, no doubt about it. But the most common approach would be that you tend to give it back because of the event that has happened before. So this is the level of understanding you should have when it comes to affect emotion and moods. Let's look into some basic emotions. 
there are many. I'm not giving here an exhaustive list, but to put things into perspective, let's look into anger, contempt, enthusiasm, envy, fear, frustration, disappointment, embarrassment, disgust, happiness, hate, hope, jealousy, sometimes professional jealousy is a big thing, joy, love, pride, surprise, Sadness. Again, I'm not giving an exhaustive list, but if you are a working professional, if you are uh, associated with any job, associated with any organization, think of your particular day. Maybe let's, let's recollect a typical day of yours in the job. Tend to see that how many of these emotions you go through in that particular day. So let's, let's be more uh, nuanced in terms of understanding where we stand in terms of the emotional outburst, emotional control, and emotional understanding. Numerous researchers have tried to limit them to a fundamental set, uh, but that might not be necessarily true because uh, many a time you see that you cannot put a, a bucket in and put all the emotions into that. Uh, I've tried to list down uh, most of the dimensions or most of the emotions that go through within your mind, that is true. But that said, you cannot make an exhaustive list because tomorrow you might feel an emotion. And this is the reason why I'm saying that I cannot make an exhaustive list. Tomorrow, you as an individual might feel an emotion which is not listed in this. Though this might be an exhaustive, seemingly exhaustive list, you might feel an emotion which is, let's say, let's say mixed with pride and surprise or mixed with frustration and disappointment some something which is which cannot be defined by a combination of this so it is individual specific that each emotion might be triggering a different set of feeling within you so this is something which you have to understand that this cannot be an exhaustive list another important aspect could be the expression of a particular emotion at times might be governed by cultural norms. So this again makes this more interesting. You have a certain uh, expression of emotion. Let's say you are happy, you are contented, you are very happy, even then you might be a person who will just pass on a, a passive smile or there might be a, a glow in your face, that's it. But there might be some people who might be, you know, even half of the happiness level, what you are feeling, they might be elated, they might be showing their excitement, they might be showing their, you know, exuberance, they might be very much, uh, you know, um, instead of smiling, they might be laughing. So there is a range of emotions. So it might be again guided by culture. There might be some culture which is, which is open to all the the the, the uh, expressive emotions but some culture might might actually you know uh, focus on or so might, might might indirectly direct you to actually be subtle in terms of the expression of emotion so again the the whole whole equation of the basic emotions are tricky mainly because it has a cultural element also coming into its its let's say uh, its manifestation when you when we started the the lecture in the introduction video itself i have categorically mentioned that you cannot take the context out so when you are working only with respect to basic pure emotions Emotions like anger, contempt, enthusiasm, envy, fear, etc. could be the things that, that we may discuss. But when we are looking into emotions in detail, not the basic emotions, emotions in detail, we have to look into situations, we have to look into context and the context here is culture. Culture might also be a, a critical factor when it comes to emotions. So let's look into some of the, the basic emotions, or basic moods, positive emotions and negative emotions. Positive emotions could be joy, could be gratitude, it could be to express a favorable evaluation of feeling, you are very, very happy, you, you got some things done, you have a gratitude towards a person or towards a team uh, who, who has done that or who has facilitated that and there could be a set of or a range of negative emotions ranging from anger or guilt and where you express unfavorable evaluation or feeling. So the basic moods are generally driven 
or could be positive as well as negative. When you are looking into the structure of the mood, I have given the, the particular source uh, where you can actually refer to. The structure of the mood can be looked from let us say four quarters. One is high negative effect, another could be a low positive effect. Another could be high positive effect and the fourth one could be low negative effect. Let us look into this in detail. When you are looking into high negative effect, high negative effect you have upset, stressed, nervous and tense coming into this quarter. When you are looking into high positive effect, you have being alert, excited, elated and happy. When you have low negative effect, you have emotions like content, being serene, relaxed and even calm. And when you have low positive effect, you might have, you might be sad, depressed, bored and even fatigued. So this is where or this is what makes the structure of the mood more critical or more clear. The structure of the mood is determined by your effect. It could be high negative effect, it could be low positive effect, it could be high positive effect or it could be low negative effect. So this is a range of moods that is, that is being driven by effect. When we look into the functions of emotions, do emotions make us irrational? This is a question you should ponder and you should uh, be able to answer when you are in your organization. There are some perspectives that suggest display of emotion makes workers seem weak, brittle or irrational. This is mainly because sometimes you are not clear in terms of your thought process, mainly because of you are being clouded by the emotion. So when you are looking into recent researchers, specifically recent studies focus on emotions are critical to rational thinking. So the traditional or the conventional thought process was that there is a certain level of emotion that is running the show. You are not able to rationally think and you are not able to rationally execute a, a particular task. But recent research have showed that they, they focus on how emotions is vital towards rational thinking. So sometimes emotions can be used for a better rational thought process, but there a sound mind, lack of cognitive dissonance is a precursor, should be an antecedent in deriving that particular scenario. So when you are looking into uh, emotions particularly, emotions provide information about how we understand the total world around us. We might be happy be, uh, towards something mainly because how the, the particular situation has unfolded. Maybe we are sad or uh, disgusted seeing how the person or the individual or the group is behaving. Sometimes uh, we tend to see that our colleagues are not cooperative, are not sharing information. We tend to uh, be a little bit frustrated. We tend to be sad, depressed because of that. Sometimes we feel uh, elated because we are the top performer within the organization. So all these ranges of emotions do exist. And this is vital in terms of making you progress within the organization. So this is what the recent researchers suggest. So do emotions make us ethical? This is yet another point which we need to think. Research on moral emotions actually question the emphasis on only cognitive side of decision making. So when you are looking into decision making process, it is, it is said that you have to be, you know, thinking with a clear mind. You have to be working out in a clear mind. But seldom do we tend to appreciate and understand the importance of emotions in a decision making. So let's look into an example of moral emotions. Say sympathy for others. Sympathy for others' sufferings. Guilt about own immoral behavior. Anger about injustice to others. So all these aspects a clear understanding or a clear decision making is possible 
if and only if there is a clear understanding of the emotions at work. Most people who empathize with others have some sense of an emotional stirring that prompts ethical action. So if people are not having the particular emotion at play, they might not be ethical as desired or as compared to others. Now let's look into some of the sources of emotions and moods. So first and foremost one is personality. So there, there might be individuals who are emotional, who are very open, who, who might not be easily affected with a certain behavior. So the, the range of emotions that they display might be on a, on a much inferior aspect or inferior uh, number or if I can uh, put a number to them. When you look into other aspects of day of the week and time of the day, you feel that uh, you, you, you certainly see that the, the level of confidence or level of emotions you have on a Monday morning might be certainly different from what you have on a Friday evening. So these are some of the things which is time control based on uh, where you are at what point of the week you are. There could be also emotions source like weather. But again, uh, the research suggests that that's an illusory correlation. That means that, uh, you know, people tend to make uh, or assume that there is a relationship, but seldom uh, there is one. So sometimes you feel that, okay, I wanted to work very hard. Uh, today, I wanted to put in my maximum effort, but you just get up and see that it's a very rainy, uh, drowsy day and you don't have the energy suddenly to, to work. So there, there is a situation that can act as or at least disguise as a source of emotion. There could be also element of stress that, that can act as a source of emotion. You feel stress. You feel that, okay, this stress is guiding us. This stress is actually, you know, taking a toll in my work, in my productivity. So basically that will actually have an issue with respect to or uh, uh, have an issue with respect to the positive emotion. I might be more inclined towards the negative side of the emotion. Again, social activities. Sometimes you feel that People, so there are some individuals who, who tend to uh, get emotionally upset when they are with, with certain set of people. Then they are, there are also individuals who feel uh, suddenly very upbeat, suddenly very motivated when they are with people. So, so social activities also acts as a trigger towards or acts as a source of emotion and mood. Sleep could be another factor. You have a sound sleep, you are more fresh, you are more happy, you are more elated, you are more, uh, you know, uh, upbeat, you are more open towards ideas. So a range of emotions are coming into picture. Whereas you, you didn't get a sound sleep, you are very frustrated, uh, you are very grumpy, you, you don't like anything that's coming across you, you are very uh, much irritated all the, uh, the day. So all these aspects can also, aspects of sleep uh, deprivation can also lead to a certain level of emotion outburst. And there could be exercise, there could be other factors like age and gender, which also has shown some relevance of as a source of emotion and mood. So when you look into, it is generally understood that, you know, a, a certain level of age where there is certain maturity, they tend to react in a, in a different way. Whereas, whereas let's, let's look into a youngster who may react to the same stimulus in a totally different way. So age, gender, also happens to qualify as sources of emotions and moods. Now let's look into emotional labor. Emotional labor is a situation in which an employee expresses organizationally the desired emotions during interpersonal transactions at work. In other words, there should be a clear understanding of emotional dissonance. We, we know what is cognitive dissonance, but we should also be well aware about the emotional dissonance. Emotional dissonance is nothing but inconsistencies between the emotions people feel and the emotions they project. So basically there are two emotions at play here. One is the set of emotions they actually feel that is there within them. 
and the second is that the emotions they they project the similar to cognitive dissonance very similar to cognitive dissonance but taking away uh, the cognitive part we are we are putting in the the emotional aspect so sometimes we tend to feel very depressed very sad uh, very much uh, disgusted towards our co employees let's let's understand this particular situation but then because of the demand of the job because of the demand of the higher management we tend to put up a happy face we tend to put up a cooperative face but the problem is that there is an emotional dissonance which we cannot ignore that is existing so emotional dissonance can be detrimental for the employees no doubt about it it leads to bottled up feelings of anger frustration and resentment so it can eventually lead to exhaustion you sometimes have uh, cases of breakdown that's happening because of this emotional dissonance that's happening you are doing something or th there is some internal uh, emotion that is that has to come out but because of the need of the the situation is different you are trying to behave in a in a different way so this is emotional dissonance which is nothing but emotional labor now emotional labor uh, actually underscores two important aspects one is surface acting and another is deep acting surface acting is hiding one's inner feelings and foregoing emotional expressions in response to display rules in other words let's look into this example an air hostess which is what the theme of the whole lecture is an air hostess smiles at a passenger even when she doesn't feel like it so there is some level of requirement of the job that is leading the person to undertake surface acting another critical aspect could be deep acting which is nothing but trying to modify one's true inner feelings based on display rules let's say a therapist trying to genuinely feel more empathy for patients this is what is required by the display rules and here the therapist is trying to genuinely feel for a particular patient whereas in surface acting it is a more peripheral show it is more of a attitude or more of a, a disposition where the demand of the job is actually triggering it but there is no actual meaning rendered to the particular act let's say in this particular case the smile it is only because of the demand of the job that the air hostess is smiling at the passenger even when she doesn't feel or doesn't like it but when you are looking into deep acting when it comes to emotional labor and deep acting a therapist the case of a therapist is more genuinely feeling uh, the empathy for his or her patient so this becomes more cr critical when it comes to deep acting rather than surface acting so here we will conclude the first lecture of affect emotions moods etc i i think that i was able to give you some insight into affect emotions and moods bring clarity because we'll be dealing with this in the coming week where we look into affect emotions and moods in in particular just remember one thing the theme of the lecture is what is all about surface acting when you are in a uh, in an element of when you are in a position of emotional dissonance you have certain emotions that have to be projected but unfortunately the situation warrants something else and you are being forced to display other set of emotions which are not the right emotions or which would not have been the emotions that would have been displayed if you were given the autonomy so please understand many a times when we try to understand cognitive dissonance we don't understand something equally critical equally relevant which is emotional dissonance on that note i will conclude today's lecture take good care see you in the next class till then bye bye